Hi, my name is Connor. Uh, I'm here presenting the Allison 250 uh, C10D, uh, which is honestly one of the really coolest, one of the very coolest freaking turbine engines that we've been able to actually get running, which is pretty sweet. But I'm here going to be talking about the, uh, the airflow specifically. So at the very front, we have our compressor. It's going to be an axial six stage compressor, uh, which leads directly into a one stage centrifugal uh, compressor which has an impeller and a diffuser inside of it. And right here we have attached is a air bleed valve. This air bleed valve here is responsible for keeping to, in preventing the uh, compressor stall uh, during engine starts. And then right next to it, we have the anti-icing valve here, which obviously would be linked right here to a linkage, uh, which goes into the cockpit. Um, this is responsible for sending to, to just making sure that there's no I icing conditions that uh, occur on the compressor. And then on to the scroll, which is uh, the housing for the centrifugal compressor, has these uh, compressor discharge air tubes here that lead directly into the combustion chamber. The combustion chamber is obviously where the magic happens, okay? The combustion chamber has an inner liner, which obviously is where the main explosion takes place. It's inside the inner liner. And the outside of the inner line, uh, the liner, uh, you're going to have this swirling compressed air that keeps it cool and makes sure that the combustion process that happens on the inside of the liner does not touch the side walls. And then obviously we have our freaking N1 turbine, which is right in this section, particularly. The N1 turbine is responsible for driving the compressor section up here in the front too. So um, that's a problem about that for that one. So N2, your N2 turbine is gonna be responsible for driving all your main accessories inside your gear uh, gearbox here, all right? This case right here is gonna be very, very important for driving all the uh, other accessories necessary for the engine operation. Uh, and then the last thing it drives, the N2 uh, turbine dr drives, is the um, output control pad here. This output control pad is typically gonna be connected directly to your uh, rotor or your propeller for your aircraft. And one more thing, uh, after we get past our N2 turbine, we have our exhaust ports, which obviously vent out any freaking um, unused uh, gases. Okay, over here we have the uh, exciter right here. This is exciter box. This exciter box, we have to be careful of two things, all right? It has a large capacitor as well as it could possibly, on some engines, contain radio radioactive material. It goes into the ignition lead here, all right? If we follow this uh, lead all the way back, it goes to the igniter itself. The igniter itself, you have to be very careful because obviously if you disconnect this uh, after it's been run, ran, it could electrocute you. So be careful. You have to make sure you ground this out before you go hand, handling and touching the, the actual uh, node itself. Okay, so here we have the fuel system. The fuel system is consisting of this fuel tank which uses this boost pump to deliver fuel directly from the tank up to the fuel pump and filter assembly here on the engine. The fuel pump and the filter assembly, then after it filters the fuel, will be delivered to the fuel control unit. The fuel control unit has a series of valves, bellows, and a lever assembly here that help maintain pressure and fuel flow throughout the entire fuel system. So, here we have the governor. The governor is usually directly connected to the, like if this were in a helicopter, it'd be directly connected to the collective pitch control. The pilot then, whenever he adjusts the, the pitch, the governor would reset to a new power demand. That demand is then transmitted to the fuel control unit on the other side. The fuel control unit on that other side will reset and vary the N1, N1 turbine speed accordingly. The governor provides control input to the entire fuel system itself. Here at the fuel control unit, fuel will be then delivered finally through this line into this lead, which goes to the fuel nozzle itself, which sprays an even flow of fuel directly into the combustion chamber. The inner liner itself is at risk of having a hot streak if this nozzle becomes clogged for any reason. We have to make sure that this nozzle is always clear. 
Hello, I'm Brandon Gonzalez, and I'm going to be explaining the lubrication system as well as the accessory gearbox housing of this Allison 250 engine. Over here, we have a starter generator, which initially, whenever the starter is engaged, it just acts as a starter. This thing will crank the gas, the gas producer drivetrain all the way up to 50% RPM. And once it's above idle, when the starter is disengaged, it's going to just act as a generator and provide power for all the electrical components of the aircraft. Over here we have the accessory gearbox housing which holds the gas producer drivetrain, the power turbine power drivetrain. The turbine power drivetrain drives the N2 tag generator as well as the governor, while the gas producer drivetrain drives the N1 tag generator, the fuel pump, the oil pump, and the fuel control. Up here we have an oil pump. This oil pump is going to pump a minimum of 50 PSI throughout the oil supply system. Lines like these send oil to the oil jets to spray and lubricate the bearings and the seals through a last chance filter. The scavenge system directs the oil back to the tank so it can be deaerated. The tank has extra space in there to allow for thermal expansion as well as a foaming of the oil and the side of the tank has baffles to prevent the oil from sloshing around. Over here we have the tank breather line. Right here we have the oil supply line and the oil return line. And down here we have the oil temp sensor that is directed to the instrument panel. Hi, I'm Daniel and I'm going to be talking about the indicating instruments on this run stand. Uh, here we have our oil temp, oil pressure, fuel pressure, turbine temperature, N1 and N2 tax. Typically, if this engine were hooked up to an actual aircraft, it would have a uh, torque meter as well to measure the engine power output. Our oil temp uh, indicator is hooked up on the uh, oil tank and it uses a Wheatstone bridge bulb to measure the temperature. Our oil pressure is connected to the accessory gearbox and measures oil pressure directly outside of the uh, oil pump. Our fuel pressure is uh, measures the fuel pressure as it comes out of the boost pump before it goes into the engine. Our N1 tachometer measures the compressor speed and our N2 tachometer measures our rotor or propeller speed. Both of those are measure the RPM through a dual element synchronous motor. Our most important instrument is our turbine temp. It measures the temperature of the turbine on the turbine outlet side through a ser a various chromel and alumel thermocouples. The chromel and alumel lines are two dissimilar metals which when heated vary in resistance which is then measured and gives us our temperature. These uh, thermocouple lines are manufactured to a specific length and they cannot be cut or kinked or we will get an inaccurate reading on our indicator. Hello my name is Jacob and today we're going to be running up the Allison 250 turbine engine. This turbine engine is amazing. It's used on, it's used on some small rotor craft such as the Allison 250 the OH6. Before we run it up, some safety things, you want to make sure that there's nothing covering up the intake or exhaust because that will mess with the flow and may damage the engine. Second thing, you want to make sure that there's oil. And that there's fuel. Yeah, fuel. Another next thing we gotta make sure is that fuel pump master starter is all off and that there's no and the idle is off so that there's nothing operating. We wanna make sure that there's no one around to get hit with the heat or any objects. Next, we'll apply power. Alright, so we're about to apply power and start up this engine. Before that, we go run down of how I'm gonna how it's gonna go down. So first I'm gonna switch master on. 
and then the fuel boost. I'm going to keep my left hand right here on the starter. The reason why is so I can use my right hand to move this. This allows for fuel and starter. So as I'm doing the, as I do this, I'm going to crank the starter and watch my N1 RPM until it reaches 15%. Then I engage. And, and I will keep and I will keep my hand on the starter until it reaches 50% and then I can let go. I'm going to keep constantly be watching in exactly the engine temperature to make sure it does not get over 800 degrees Celsius. If it does, that's a hot start. All right. Master on. And that's how it's done.